Uh, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Sarah O'Brien with the Highway Safety Research Center um, here at UNC. And I'd like to welcome you to the Safe Routes to School program uh, webinar on the non-infrastructure transportation alternatives um, program and application process. Uh, Ed Johnson is, is on the phone and will be walking through the, um, the webinar today. For housekeeping purposes, I wanted to let everybody know that you'll be uh, remaining in uh, mute only. So if you have a question, feel free to um, write it into the question pod and we'll be reviewing that and, and keeping track and, and monitoring to those questions as they come in. We'll probably hold questions for Ed to answer until the end, but feel free to write them into the chat pod and we will um, address them uh, as, as we can. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ed. And good afternoon, everyone. This is Ed Johnson with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. I'm the North Carolina Safe Routes to School Coordinator housed within the Division of Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation. Today, I will be talking with you about the new North Carolina Safe Routes to School non-infrastructure program. So thank you for the opportunity to present to you all today. This webinar, as Sarah said, will be recorded and posted to the North Carolina Safe Routes to School website. So please feel free to share this webinar with others who may not be able to, uh, to attend today, but may be interested in applying or collaborating. In this session, the intent is to provide a general overview of this new initiative by providing some background information to those of you who may not be fully familiar with the Safe Routes to School program at large, and the Safe Routes to School program in North Carolina. We will briefly cover available funding and the program's timeline, as well as eligibility for applicants, eligible programs and activities, the selection criteria, conditions of reimbursement, the application process itself, and the submission instructions, all of which these items are covered in greater detail on the online form at the North Carolina Safe Routes to School Program Guidelines and Application. I will share with you the website location at the end of this webinar. So let's start. Some of you may be new to the Safe Routes to School Program, so it's important to understand its history. The North Carolina Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School program was established in 2005 through a Congressional Transportation Bill, Safety Lou, as a federally funded program to provide an opportunity for communities to improve conditions for bicycling and walking to school. As this fund funding has currently been exhausted, it is now currently supported with Transportation Alternatives funding federal funding through the Surface Transportation Block Grant Program established under the FAST Act. The purpose of this program is to enable and encourage children, including those with disabilities, to walk and bicycle to school, make bicycling and walking to school a safer and more appealing transportation option, thereby encouraging a healthy and active lifestyle from an early age, and furthermore, it's to facilitate the planning, development, and implementation of projects and activities that will improve safety and reduce traffic, fuel consumption, and air pollution in the vicinity of schools. So let's talk a little bit about the North Carolina Safe Routes to School program. To continue the work that has been accomplished by the Safe Routes to School program in our state, this initiative has been allocated $1.5 million per year of transportation alternative program funds for non-infrastructure programming and activities over a three-year period. Funding requests may range from a yearly amount of $50,000 to $100,000 per project. 
Projects will be awarded in 2019 and can be one to three years in length. Funding may be requested to support activities for community-wide or regional programming. Applicants must leverage their request for TAP funding, Transportation Alternative Program funding, with other funding sources that may be available to them, including grant awards or local funding for the 20% match. The other federal or state funds cannot be used for the match. Applicants who can designate other available resources to fund programs and activities to meet comprehensive Safe Routes to School strategy will be considered upon evaluation. So let's review the program timeline. We are past the call for proposals as opening, and today's our informational webinar. It's important to note. March 29th, applications will be due by 11.59 p.m. April 12th, we look forward to being uh, having eligible applications distributed to the review committee for scoring and then receiving those back to make recommendations on April 30th. Then from there, the board meeting in June to present the awardee information to the Board of Transportation and be able to execute agreements in July. It is important to understand that this schedule is provided here to assist you in your planning. However, actual dates are subject to change. So with refer reference to eligible recipients, Let's review the guidelines as presented to the North Carolina Department of Transportation from the Federal Highways Safe Routes to School Guidance. Eligible recipients include the following, local governments, meaning municipalities, county agencies. Examples are public health or county tourism or economic development offices, regional transportation authority and regional transportation planning organizations, as defined under U.S. Federal Code 23-135-M. Natural resource or public land agencies. You can see the listing there for uh, National Forest, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, state or local park agencies. School districts, local education agencies or schools, public or nonprofit private schools tribal governments, any other local or regional government entity with responsibility for oversight of transportation or recreational trails, except for municipal planning organizations or state agencies. Also included is nonprofit organizations that oversee the administration of local transportation safety programs. This entity must be willing and able to enter into a reimbursement agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. A letter of support and administration from the lead sponsoring agency or organization must be submitted with the application indicating support of the project and the sponsor's ability to enter into agreement with North Carolina Department of Transportation. A lead sponsor will be responsible for project administration, paying any work performed or materials purchased, and submitting proper proof of payment to the NCDOT for reimbursement. This sponsor will also be NCDOT's primary contact if awarded. Other eligible agencies and organizations with a strong interest in and support for the use of funding for non-infrastructure programs and activities are strongly encouraged to partner with the lead sponsor to develop the project application as a co-sponsor. A letter of support from the school, district, or districts, or schools to be impacted by the project is required if they are not the lead agency. So to stimulate creative approaches to implementing this program, communities are encouraged to develop relationships among diverse stakeholders. Letters of support from these other stakeholders may be attached to the application. 
partners who are contributing funds or resources to the non-infrastructure project as part of the 20% match must supply a resolution or letter indicating commitment in the application. Typical costs charged directly to a federal award are the compensation of employees who work on that award, their related fringe benefit costs, the cost of materials and other items of expense incurred for the federal award. I encourage you for further clarification to look at the Code of Federal Reg Regulations 2017 Title II, Volume 1, Part 200. This is covered under 200.412, Classification of Costs. With regard to eligible programs and activities, non-infrastructure projects consist of programs and activities that, when implemented, aim to shift community behavior, attitudes and social norms through education, encouragement and enforcement strategies that increase the safety and convenience of children walking and or bicycling to and from school. For all applicants, Request for funds must address or involve the implementation of all of the E's. Education, encouragement, enforcement, and evaluation, with the exception of engineering. There is further explanation regarding what I mean in reference to the E's in the guidance document located online. It is important, please note, with regards to the engineering programming, you will need to be in contact with your NCDOT division staff about possible infrastructure funds for developing engineering solutions in the vicinity of your schools in your area. I don't want to confuse you, but this is a non-infrastructure granting opportunity. Furthermore, applicants may apply for eligible programs and activities that allow for needs to be addressed at a cluster of schools, a school district, municipality, or county, or at a regional level. Applications must define complete, identifiable, and implementable projects. Funds are not available for partial activities that cannot function as a complete and useful whole. So please note that the inappropriate uses for funding is also equally important to understand. These inappropriate uses include programs and activities that do not specifically serve the stated purposes of the Safe Routes to School program, projects that focus on pickup and drop-off areas, or procedures in order to make it more convenient for the drivers rather than to improve child safety, and or walking and biking access. Education programs that primarily focus on bus safety. Purchases of promotional or incentive material that do not serve a training purpose. Purchases of bicycles, bike trailers, or other equipment that does not comply with the Buy America Act. So I want to share with you more information about eligible programs and activities. Any program or activity funded should benefit elementary and middle school children, K through eight, either directly or indirectly. Programs may indirectly benefit high school aged youth or the general public. However, these constituencies cannot be the sole or primary beneficiaries. Programs including traffic education and enforcement activities for a specific school or schools must take place within approximately two miles of the identified school or schools. Other eligible non-infrastructure activities do not have a location restriction. Funding for education and encouragement activities at private schools is also allowed. This program specifies that public awareness campaigns and outreach to media, community leaders, 
traffic education and enforcement in the vicinity of schools, and student sessions on bicycle and pedestrian safety, health, and environment are all eligible non-infrastructure related programs and activities. Further ideas for eligible non-infrastructure programs and activities are broken down into the four E categories as specified in your guidelines, which are located online. So it's important to note that projects must address all four categories. With regard to the selection review of applications, the North Carolina DOT staff will conduct a preliminary review of all applications for eligibility, for completeness, and general appropriateness. Applications that pass the initial screening will then be viewed by the review committee. This group will include NCDOT staff, UNC Highway Safety Research Center staff, and individuals with professional experience related to developing, administering, and or implementing bicycle and pedestrian related programs and activities. These individuals will represent agencies such as municipal planning organizations, rural planning organizations, council of governments, and public health. The review committee will evaluate each application using the selection criteria outlined on our next slide, as well as the Federal Highway Administration Transportation Alternatives Guidance. The committee will also look for the final set of selected projects to show both a geographical spread across the state and representation from urban and rural communities. The review committee will forward their recommendations to the NCDOT for final approval. So in connection with the evaluation of the applications, the application review will focus on the following criteria. Likelihood of success. Does the selected strategies, do the selected strategies have a track record of supporting safe walking and biking? Is there sufficient support to implement the proposed strategies? Does, does the sponsor appear to have the capacity to ramp up and implement the project in a timely way? Is there a project champion or regional support to keep the project on track? Collaboration. Does the proposed project show regional or multi-municipal cooperation? Has the sponsor demonstrated coordination and collaboration with agencies such as their NCDOT division, their municipal planning organizations or their rural planning organizations, municipalities, the general public, advocacy organizations, school districts, etc., in developing the proposed activities and plans for implementation? Need. Is there a timeliness and need for the project? What benefits are expected as a result of the project? Reasonableness of cost. Is the cost of the proposed project reasonable based on the scope? Comprehensive, meaning does the project describe planned education encouragement, evaluation, and enforcement strategies. Having to do with the context of the proposal, experience. Does the project include partners who have experience implementing safe walking and biking strategies? Does the sponsor show evidence of understanding federal aid requirements? Having to do with equity. Does the project meet the need of a disadvantaged group in our area? Fit, is the proposed project consistent with the, or, and supportive of local and regional plans and initiatives? In addition to the 20% match, does the proposed project leverage other projects or leverage funding from other agencies, local governments, and or community-based organizations?
pertaining to the conditions of reimbursement. Funding is provided on, on a reimbursement basis to the agency or organization responsible for the administration of the funds. The contracting agency or organization must execute a legal agreement with NCDOT prior to receiving funding authorization. This agreement will outline the responsibilities of each party, the terms of the agreement, and the deliverables. This agreement must be executed within three months of being awarded the project. Selected recipients will receive a formal notice to proceed from NCDOT once the reimbursement agreement is fully executed. Cost incurred before receipt of a notice to proceed are not a reimbursable expense, and any such costs must be absorbed by the contracting agency or organization. Invoices for partial project completion will be allowed. Conditions such as this will be defined in the agreement. A portion of the total NCDOT allocation will be withheld until the project is completed, including any evaluation tasks and all relevant materials are submitted to NCDOT and approved by the Division of Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation. Educational and encouragement materials or safety messages must be submitted to NCDOT for review and approval prior to distribution and use. Award recipients will have up to 36 months to complete their projects unless otherwise stated in the agreement, starting from the date of receipt of a written notice to proceed. Award recipients of projects that implement school-based programs and or activities must collect evaluation data at each school participating in this non-infrastructure initiative using the student in class travel tally, and the parent survey. The time period for collecting these data will be defined in the reimbursement agreement. A percentage of the final reimbursement payment will also be contingent upon the lead sponsor conducting a closing evaluation of programs and or activities implemented through this non-infrastructure award. So periodic progress reports Describing accomplishments and expenditures will be required. Changes in project schedules must be approved by NCDOT within the Division of Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation. It's important to note that unspent funds may, we, may be withdrawn from the award recipients that fail to meet timely benchmarks in their project implementation. NCDOT must be credited for project participation in documents, materials, press releases, and other announcements and promotional materials related to the non-infrastructure project. All files, electronic files, maps, technical illustrations, graphics, etc. produced with these funds will become the property of NCDOT in the Division of Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation and the award recipient. Concerning the application, applications, applicants must download the application via the NCDOT Safe Routes to School website, complete it, and submit it to NCDOT via the email that is listed on the website. Due to the collaborative nature of many Safe Routes to School non-infrastructure activities, lead agencies are encouraged to coordinate their response with other stakeholders who will be aiding in the development and implementation of the proposed programs and activities. Supplemental documents to be supplied with the application form are explained as part of the full application package as we see here. These are also explained in the guidance form online. The following documents must be submitted with the completed application form via email. 
line item budget and supportive supporting narrative or budget justification. So you'll see the application uh, for the budget form. A letter of commitment from the lead agency. Letter or letters of support from additional financially contributing partners contributing to the 20% match. Letters of support from schools or schools or school districts that are directly impacted by the proposed program. You're also encouraged to uh, attach other letters of support. Concerning the application and your submission instructions, please refer to the guidance document offered online. The submission instructions are there. You will see a naming convention that we have asked for you uh, to adhere to, as well as other items that are necessary for the completion and acceptance of your application. Please name your completed application form using the naming conventions as outlined in the guidance document, and you will need to use the naming conventions as listed in the guidance document for other budget or budget narrative information, letters of commitment and support, it's also important to understand that Word or PDF versions are accepted. In the body of your submissions email, please list all letters of commitment and support that are included in your application package. This allows for NCDOT to be sure the applicant's full submission package was received. You will see online in the guidance document the email application uh, address, the email address, care of Ed Johnson, Safe Routes to School Program, North Carolina DOT, Division of Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation. Again, to reiterate the timeline, applications must be submitted by 11.59 p.m. on March 29, 2019. The website for North Carolina DOT Safe Routes to School Non-Infrastructure Program is being updated this afternoon. So I encourage you to please check back with the website for updates and for the most current information. So thank you for taking the time to learn more about the North Carolina Department of Transportation Safe Routes to School Non-Infrastructure Program, its goals and its objectives, and this opportunity to work together to advance the development of safe routes to North Carolina schools. Thank you also to the staff at UNC Highway Safety Research Center, specifically Nancy pullen sufert Sarah O'Brien, Seth Lajeunesse, Allison West, and Stephen Heine for their continued guidance and efforts in providing technical assistance for this program. I look forward to receiving your applications and working with prospective partners. Thank you for your attendance today. All right, thank you, Ed. And as a reminder to everybody else on the line, um, we are gonna keep the phones muted just because we have so many people um, here today. We appreciate you being here. If you do have additional questions, please feel free to write them into the question pod. Um, at this point, I'm gonna uh, turn some questions over to Ed for, for him to respond to. Um, one of the first questions we got was trying to understand whether MPOs and RPOs were eligible to receive funds. Could you clarify that? Certainly. RPOs are eligible. Rural planning organizations are eligible. MPOs, by federal highway guidance, are not. Thank you. Um, Another question we had was, uh, could you provide some examples of approved funding uses? Certainly. So I talked about uh, the, the ease, education, <laughs> encouragement, enforcement, and evaluation. Certainly having to do with education, would be uh, teaching children about pedestrian or bicycle and traffic safety, teaching personal safety, health, and environmental benefits of walking and bicycling, 
uh, educating parents and teachers to enforce or encourage proper safety practices with their children, um, educating parents and neighbors uh, as drivers in and around the school area on the rules of the road or proper drop-off and pickup procedures. Um, another educational opportunity is educating law enforcement officers on laws related to pedestrian and bicycle safety and the role of law enforcement. Uh, delivering instruction on how to teach the Let's Go NC curriculum or similar sil uh, skills course. Uh, crossing guard training. Uh, being able to um, have uh, launch driver safety campaigns in the vicinity of schools. Encouragement programs are uh, certainly encouraging to participation in International Walk to School Day, participation in uh, Bicycle Month or Bike to School Day, Car Free Day, or other Walk and Roll to School Day um, activities, uh, developing uh, or implementing mileage clubs and uh, contests. Uh, enforcement uh, an example of enforcement opportunities are initiating community enforcement programs or driving uh, driver yielding operations. Uh, develop and implement a safety patrol program or in initiate a neighborhood state, a speed watch program. Conduct high visibility enforcement operations in the vicinity of schools. Uh, initiate walk with a cop or sim similar programs involving local, regional, or state police. An evaluation being gather, analyze, and evaluate current conditions and behaviors, uh, conduct uh, walkability or bikeability checklists, um, access, uh, assess changes in knowledge through pre and post testing of course uh, participants and evaluate the implementation of a Safe Routes to School pro uh, project, program, or activity. Okay, thank you. That was quite a lot. Um, definitely look at the guidelines for, for additional examples or to uh, get that list again. Um, so another question has come up about eligibility. Are charter schools also eligible for funding? Yes, they are. Okay. And um, would infrastructure improvements such as the school zone flashers be eligible? They would not. Okay, so that would be a situation where you would need to talk to your NCDOT division person to find another avenue to get some sort of infrastructure improvement funded. Correct. The, the, the best um, solution to that is to involve that conversation with the NCDOT division staff. The, the signage would require, unfortunately, um, infrastructure implementation. It requires a foundation. Therefore, it requires an environmental review and possibly right-of-way acquisition and then uh, bid proposals. Um, and they handle that kind of signage implementation just as they would for a two-lane road um, or a four-lane road construction. Okay. Thank you. Um, could you please give some examples of what is eligible matching funding? Certainly. Um, you could talk to your public health agencies or schools or school districts uh, to find out what, um, what that 20% match could be. When, when I'm talking about a 20% match, it's not as though that lead agency is going to have to write DOT a check. What, it, what will happen is that based on the submission for reimbursement, um, you will in, re, uh, submit that reimbursement invoice, and then we will uh, reimburse up to 80% of that uh, expenditure. Okay. Um, another question came in to clarify, must the program run for the full three years or can it be a shorter time frame? It can be a, a shorter time frame. Uh, you have up to 36 months to um, run the program. 
we are encouraging for sustainability uh, of uh, Safe Routes to School for uh, the longer the program and the greater uh, geographic reach and the more collaborative partners, um, we are encouraging that kind of participation. Okay, thank you. Um, can you clarify if salary for new crossing guards, new school crossing guards, would be an eligible type of expense? New crossing guards, uh, no, but it would, um, the eligibility for reimbursement of a uh, substitute teacher for them to be that crossing guard and attend their training would be. That's covered under the Federal Highway Safe Routes to School Guidelines. Okay, thank you. Um, what is considered a reasonable percentage of the grant to go towards project management staff? Is there a is there a cutoff or a, what's considered reasonable for that? A range? Ooh, <laughs> um, I I really wouldn't have any idea because I don't know what the program uh, proposal would would look like a. a Percentage of that may look at around 60 to 65 percent, but again, it's it, that's looking at $100,000 a year, perhaps. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, there was another question trying to clarify um, the match and whether in kind could count towards that 20 percent match. So the guidance for that that we received for uh, from Federal Highways with reference to the match is um, that uh, salaries and um, fringe benefit costs, cost of materials, and other items of expense incurred for the federal award are reimbursable. But the clarification comes from the document, the Code of Federal Regulations 2017, Title II, uh, that I've referenced there. And I encourage those, those entities, those municipalities, those financial um, finance officers that you're working with to review that for your municipality or your agency. There's a section on the classification of costs in that document. Okay. And I guess if anybody has any additional specific questions, they'd need to follow up with you? Correct. Okay. Um, all right, let's see. We had um, another question um, about uh, clarifying the, the two miles within a school. And would that just apply to enforcement-related activities, or does that also mean if you're conducting some other kind of program or training, something like that, that it would also need to be within the two miles of the school? We are looking for it to be within uh, two miles of the K through 8, but we understand that uh, certainly that that um, gets a little squishy, um, <laughs> technical term but that uh, we, we certainly are encouraging within that two mile radius for the school participation to, to occur, but it's not locked into a strict two mile. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have a question here about clarifying um, an, uh, what would count as far as non-infrastructure that might be related to infrastructure. So if if a community wanted to do a network study to evaluate uh, infrastructure solutions, um, as well as you know looking at uh, um, you know infrastructure solutions that would be would be eligible. So basically, thinking about preliminary engineering type work or or design work, would any of that be eligible? It, it certainly would, as long as it's incorporating the other three E's. Education, encouragement, and enforcement. It can't. Uh, we're we're not encouraging a, a standalone evaluation or what could be termed as a feasibility study. Okay. 
The application um, must include all four E's and how you would implement that. Okay, so if they were just doing a network study looking only at infrastructure, that probably would not be sufficient. Correct. Okay. Um, additionally, kind of kind of related, if um, if there was a community that wanted to fund the development of a safe routes to school plan, a uh, biking walking plan for the school or the municipality, is that eligible, assuming that they uh, talk about all the E's, address all the E's? Addressing all the E's and have a, a program uh, able to implement, not just doing the action plan. Okay, so it can't just be developing the action plan. They also need to get towards implementation of it. Correct. Okay. Um, and let's see, there's a question about how can we find out who our NCDOT division staff person is? If you will go online to the ncdot.gov and look under on the bottom of the page, or the highways section, um, division of highways, that will delineate where um, geographically those points of contacts are. Okay. I'll be glad also to um, put on our NCDOT Safe Routes to School website a map that has uh, the current uh, division delineations and uh, current names of points of contact for those. Okay, great. Um, all right, let me get down a little bit further here. Um, Okay, does the lead agency also have to be the agency providing the local match, i.e., could a city or county provide the match but the school district be the lead or vice versa? Yes, that is fine. Mm -hmm. the, the rule planning organization could be the, the lead agency and other contributors. The school district could be the lead agency with other contributors or vice versa. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's some more questions kind of clarifying where the, where the line is between infrastructure and non-infrastructure. Um, so, for example, would painting or striping a crosswalk, is that also considered infrastructure? Yes, that is considered infrastructure. And again, I would encourage if there are products from the uh, non-infrastructure application that require paint, or signage, or um, any kind of delineation like that, that's where the relationship building with your NCDOT division staff becomes important. Okay. So traffic signals, crosswalks, pedestrian heads, anything that's basically related to the hard environment is considered infrastructure, and therefore they would need to seek a, dif a different funding source. Correct. Okay. Um, and then in general, I know you mentioned you would put the map up or, or point people to their NCDOT division contacts. Is there a specific point of contact typically within a division office? Each NCDOT division, uh, there are 14 divisions through, located throughout the state. Each division has what's termed a planning engineer, and that planning engineer is uh, the point of contact that I would I would direct uh, any information or contact with. Okay. Um, another question about the match. To clarify, uh, what documentation is needed to use um, staff time towards the match? And can this staff time include volunteers or staff of partner organizations as well? That would be within your budget narrative and also within your, uh, your budget um, spreadsheet to delineate that. 
Okay. Would salary for police to help direct traffic at peak times qualify? Hmm. Uh, I don't know if it would or not. I'd have to I'd have to find out from Federal Highway guidance on whether that could or not. I don't believe it would. Okay. Um, okay, a, a question about evaluation. Um, are the travel tallies and the parent surveys the minimum requirement, but then programs also need to do some other type of evaluation, um, like maybe something that's listed um, in, the, in the guidance documents? Um, can you clarify what, what you're looking for for evaluation? Certainly, they'll, they'll be at the end of the project um, close out documentation that will um, be consistent with uh, the evaluation of the entire project itself. How did the project go? What were the what were the goods, the bads, the right, the wrongs? So that we can keep um, the Safe Routes of School Office can keep improving, and uh, that material will be um, contingent upon final uh, payment. Okay. Um, will there be another call for applications at some point in the future, like 2020 or 2021, or is this the only application period over the three years? This will be the only application period over the three years. Okay. Um, looking back through to see if there's anything else. Um, there was another question that's somewhat tangentially related, basically kind of acknowledging that infrastructure costs are not eligible through this. Are there other sources that people could look to um, for infrastructure funding besides working with their NCDOT division office? There are in working with their municipal planning organizations or their rural planning organizations um, to find out if there's any direct allocation funding for uh, infrastructure implementation. Each one of those different agencies has um, the opportunity and has uh, minimal funding as it is uh, to do some infrastructure. That's why it's important to be able to build that relationship with your MPO, your RPO, and your division staff. If there is a crosswalk that needs to be put in, signage, uh, signals, those kinds of things, because they can be incorporated, potentially incorporated, into an existing project in the area of concern. Okay, and then to kind of clarify the funding going along with that three-year period, um, is it a $1.5 million amount per year for three years, um, meaning each year there's a $1.5 million, or is it $1.5 million for the total three years? It's $1.5 million each year. Okay. So the total amount available over three years will be $4.5 million. Correct. And um, can applicants apply um, for the um, the the range, the fifty thousand to a hundred thousand per year for three years, or can they apply for the total amount, meaning one hundred fifty thousand to three hundred thousand total? So, for example, do do they need to somehow break down? how much they're requesting per year over that three-year period, or if they go for a three-year project, is it just that the total amount is within the cap? So you'll see within the budget request and the application and the guidelines the, um, the, the answer for that, and I encourage people to look at the guidelines and the application. It delineates that you break the budget down per year uh, so we can see what is spent per year and then there's a cumulative budget for the entire three-year period. Okay. Um, we had another question about project examples. Is is there are there any examples, or um, you know, is there anything online that you could point to 
for uh, what you consider a successful project that a, like a small municipality has completed? Certainly, I, I encourage um, while the active route to school program is still underway that uh, you can go to the North Carolina Safe Routes to School uh, website for DOT and um, look at examples and periodicals that are there, but also the Active Routes to School. Uh, if you Google Active Routes to School, it'll take you to the Community Connections uh, website for public health. And there are examples there for uh, different um, evaluation, enforcement, encouragement, education programs that each one of the 10 coordinators has participated in over the five-year period. Okay, thank you. I'm scrolling back through. And uh, so one more question clarifying that the period of time given that it's for this application process is for up to three years um, but they could be shorter than three years could an applicant apply for funding for something just for the third year uh, they could certainly um, to be delineated or, or allocated within uh, the third year of, of say, 2021, I guess, or 2022, uh, certainly, um, certainly can. Uh, our, our encouragement, though, is that the, the project have um, sustainability. Uh, we're trying to reach and have this reach communities um, over a large geographic area to um, keep the initiatives and the momentum of Safe Routes to School in North Carolina. So um, I, I would encourage that there, if there's a collaborative effort for that third year for implementation, that it uh, be a strong application. Okay. Um, and uh, another kind of, I guess, comment really more than a question, although I guess there's a question here. Uh, so one person is, is noting that one month to put an application together and reach out for potential partners and, and build some relationships for collaboration is, is a kind of a tight window, um, particularly given that this is one shot for funding for the next three years. So would NCDOT consider extending the application period to help uh, eligible applicants build that collaboration? Unfortunately not. Um, this schedule has uh, been dictated um, to the Safe Routes to School office, and uh, so we are uh, being as proactive as we can in order to um, uh, have this roll out as quickly as we can. We realize that this is a tight window, and we uh, uh, certainly apologize for that, knowing that people will have to react and proact rather quickly in order to get and build partnerships. But we are encouraging folks to be able to do just that um, and, and be able to do it quickly. Okay. I do encourage people um, to look on the Safe Routes to School NCDOT Safe Routes to School website. You'll see a hyperlink there for transportation alternatives programs. That will take you to a Connect website. We'll have some explanations to that. Off to the right, you'll see guidance material. You'll see um, the application itself located there. If you'll keep checking back to that site, that's where I'll upload the uh, division uh, NCDOT division contacts, and um, also you'll see the guidance material there. I encourage you to read through the guidance material uh, line by line, word for word, um, pass and review that with your finance officers and your other partners. Um, certainly research and review the guidance material that's within our guidance that we reference to uh, make sure you interpretate, interpret that uh, correctly. Okay. 
Um, another question about partnering and looking for a, a specific example. Um, are you aware of or can you point to uh, examples where um, applicants uh, basically partnered with a Safe Routes to School program in conjunction with an AARP project or, or with someone from AARP partnering on a project for Safe Routes to School? No, unfortunately I can't, but I'd love to see that kind of partnership. Um, AARP has a wonderful yeah. example of Complete Streets and has been a strong supporter of the Complete Streets initiative and is a wonderful catalyst for uh, getting intergenerational activities um, through older adults and younger adults. So unfortunately I don't have an example for that, but um, I certainly encourage you to uh, reach out and uh, connect with your AARP representative, if that's a possibility. Okay. Um, another question about <clears throat> eligible um, expenses. Are marketing and communications costs eligible? And can you clarify about um, materials that may be created for the project and, and how they have to be approved? Yes, marketing materials. Uh, Things like um, safety campaigns or uh, if you're doing um, social media, um, those kinds of outreach are certainly um, uh, reimbursable. What was the other, the second part of your question? Um, clarifying about uh, approval or, or process by which approval will happen for materials that are created. Um, any, any marketing or materials that might be created for use in their programs and needing to be approved by NCDOT? Certainly, as we enter into an agreement with each one of the entities uh, funded, that um, we will establish the communication for that to happen, um, but that all materials with any kind of uh, branding, um, the media or materials, curricula, that kind of thing will We'll, um, we'll work together on that for um, for that development and that, that branding. But that'll be worked out in the agreement itself. Okay. Um, and then uh, another question about once the award process has happened, is there a place where, where uh, NCDOT will post who uh, received the awards and um, and will the public know know when that is? We certainly will do a, a press release for this, um, and we will notify not only the recipients for the reward, awards, but also for um, the, those applicants that were not awarded. But we'll we'll be sure to do a press release for those who were awarded. Okay. Um, well, we're coming up on our hour time here, and I think we've gone through all the questions. Um, I will say if anybody else has any questions that uh, either we didn't get to or we misinterpreted or you have additional questions after looking through the materials online a little bit more closely, please feel free to reach back out to Ed Johnson. Um, his contact information um, is available on that website. Um, and let me know if you have any other questions for us now. Otherwise, we will close the webinar. Thank you all again for your time this afternoon and for uh, your attention to this. I look forward to working with you.